Welcome to Thursday's edition of Renew Plus. I'm Pastor Tony. Thank you for joining us again today. And we're in week number two of the series we've entitled New Life. And of course, that's within the course that we'll be on for the next few months entitled Navigating the New. How to Learning how to walk and navigate in this new creation, this new life that God has created and given to us in Christ Jesus. Now we'll go back over to the book of Ephesians again today, chapter 2. That's where we've been the last uh, day or two. And just look at a couple of these awesome realities that we've been looking at. And Ephesians is just slam-packed full of them. Uh, in identification with Christ's principles and realities. But Ephesians 2, verse number 1, and it says, And you. Remember, he is linking us with what he was praying in chapter 1 that we would see that we would see Jesus raised up to the highest pinnacle at the right hand of God by the power of God. And notice he says, and you. So he is linking and including us in and with Christ. He is identifying us completely in Jesus. Remember, Jesus didn't do any of these things for himself. He didn't go to the cross for himself. He, didn't, he wasn't crucified for himself. He wasn't paying the price for his own sin. He was doing this as our stand-in, as our substitute and our sacrifice. And in doing so, everything he did for us, we did with him, together with him. That's what he's saying. And he says, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Now see, we were, that's the way we were, the old man dead in trespasses and sins. But notice, he made us alive together with Jesus. Now look on down to verse number five. Even when we were dead in trespasses, He made us alive together with Christ. Again, same thing. By grace you have been saved. But notice verse 6. He takes it a step further. And He raised us up together. And He made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Just as Jesus completely and totally identified with us in our sin, we totally and identify with Jesus in His resurrection and in His ascension and in His seating at the right hand of God. I tell you, that is power. Only, that's why He says, by grace you have been saved, because outside of grace, you would never ever be able to accept these truths and realities. Because you're going to say, there's no way I could ever be raised up and seated at the right hand of God in heavenly places. But in Christ you can. By the grace of God you can. By the abundant, overflowing measure of grace that God put in Christ, I tell you, we can see ourselves in this. Now, everything that God did in Christ, by grace, has to be accepted and received and recognized by faith. In other words, this is only going to be a reality in your life now to the measure and to the degree to which you accept this to be true and believe it to be true by faith and begin to act on it and reckon it so, count it to be so in your life. So he raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Verse seven, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. So again, he's telling us how and why this happens is because of the grace of God. Not by our own merits, not by our own works, but it's by grace. And everything that God gave us and made available to us by grace has to be accepted and walked in by faith. Now, let's look over to the book of Colossians today. Book of Colossians. This is going to parallel some things we just read there in the book of Ephesians, particularly chapter 2. But Colossians chapter 2, and notice this. Colossians, the second chapter. And verse number 12 is where we're going to pick it up. Okay, verse number 12, it says, Buried with Him. Now, we've already seen that, haven't we? Romans 6 and Ephesians also, to some degree, alluded to that. But chapter uh, 2, verse 12 in Colossians says, Buried with Him in baptism. That's immersion. In other words, we were swallowed up. We were plunged into Jesus and his identity, buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him up from the dead. Now I'm going to read this in Amplify because it brings out a couple of things 
I think are important to us. Verse 12 in the Amplified, Thus you were circumcised when you were buried with him in your baptism, in which you were also raised with him, raised with him, we were buried with him, we were also raised with him to a new life. Now God didn't raise us up to live the same old life that he did before. I mean, if he, if he didn't want to change anything, he could have just left it the way it was and Jesus wouldn't have had to go to the cross and, and go to the tomb and then be resurrected. No, he raised us up in order for us to have this new life. See, we were raised up with Jesus to a new life through your faith in the working of God. I want you to see that right there. That is through our faith in the working of God. Not your faith in your works, but uh, in your faith in the finished work, the working of God that he did in Christ Jesus and then gave to us by grace. Through your faith in the working of God as displayed when he raised him up from the dead. Now notice in verse number 13, and he says, and you, there's that and you gospel again, all right? And you being dead in tra your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he is made alive together with him, having forgiven you of all trespasses. Now notice, once we were forgiven of all trespasses, once our slate was wiped clean, once Jesus satisfied the claims of justice that were against us, that condemning sentence that were hanging over our head, notice what happened. Then he, uh, then, then God with and in Christ raised us up, made us alive together, and raised us up together with Jesus. See, we couldn't be raised up together with Jesus if we weren't freely forgiven of all sin, if sin were still there. If there were even a trace of sin still in our life, condemnation, a sin debt hanging over our head, then we could not have been made alive together and raised up together with Jesus. And certainly, we could not be seated at God's right hand in heavenly places. No way. That, would, that could never happen if there was still some trace of sin in us. Did you know what that tells us right there? That tells us that is full evidence that God is freely forgiven, wiped out, cleansed, us of all sin, wiped out all condemnation, guilt, and shame, and is now treating us and looking at us in Christ just as if sin never existed in our life. That's powerful. I tell you, I keep saying that, but th these are such powerful truths and realities right here. You know, once you see these, once you know these, I tell you, it just swallows up what we used to be. It just swallows up all the sin. It swallows up all the memory of sin. It, it swallows up all the sense of condemnation, guilt, and shame in our life and gives us that full free access to God and the throne of God in Christ Jesus. Wow, I tell you, there is so much. I think we'll come back to Colossians 2 again, but notice in line with that, let's go back to Colossians 1. See, just a couple of things that related to this. Again, these are in Christ realities right here in Christ realities that we're talking about now notice in verse number 11 uh, Colossians 1 11, it says strengthen with all might now when did uh, now he's talking about us when were we strengthened with all might when God he re released in Christ and in us the immeasurable unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power his resurrection life and power Notice, we were strengthened with all might, not some might, all might, according to his glorious power. That's the power we're talking about right there, referring to. For all patience and long suffering with joy, verse 12, giving thanks to the Father. That's, uh, that's God who raised Jesus from the dead, but he's also our heavenly Father. He said, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Notice, this is already a past tense done deal. God the Father has already qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Now, when did he do this? When he justified us in the spirit with Jesus, made us alive together with Jesus, raised us up together with Jesus, ascended together with Jesus into the heavenly place, and then seated us at his own right hand. That's when he qualified us. See, he not only gave us an inheritance, 
but then he qualified us to be our partaker of that inheritance. Verse 13, he has delivered us, past tense, he has delivered us from the power or the grip of darkness, and he has conveyed us, translated us, into the kingdom of the son of his love. Now look, this is already done. This is already a done deal. This just is a reality that Jesus was released from the power and grip of darkness after becoming sin for us, that he also released us from the grip and the power of darkness in our life. Dark, the kingdom of darkness has no more power, dominion, or control over us. Their deal is done. It is a, we are no longer under the foot of the oppressor. See, under the Old Testament, under the Old Covenant, we see that the oppressor had the upper hand, but because of the radical change in the finished work of God in Christ, in His death, burial, and resurrection, that all changed. The oppressor no longer has dominion over us. He no longer has the upper hand. Now, we have the upper hand. We've been lifted up to heavenly places, far above all principalities, powers, mights, and dominions and every name that is named. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and he has translated, he didn't just leave us in oblivion out there floating around. He didn't just deliver us from the power of darkness. He also transferred us into the kingdom of the son of his love. You know what? You're just as much a part, a member, a citizen of the kingdom of God now as you will when you get to heaven. I can tell you that's what this is saying because it's not something that's going to happen, not something in the process of happening. This is something that has already happened, a done deal in our identification with Christ. Just as much as Jesus has been delivered from the grip of darkness and transferred into the kingdom of God, firstborn from the dead, we also, just as much a reality for us because we're in Christ. We're with him. Now notice in verse number 14, in whom, in Christ, we have redemption. We looked at this yesterday in Ephesians 1, 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Again, he's just, he's reemphasizing this fact that when we were forgiven of all sin, when was that? In the finished work of Jesus, death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. God justified Jesus in the spirit. He justified you. He made him alive in the spirit. He made you alive in the spirit. When he raised him up, he raised you up. When he seated him at his own right hand, he, he seated you at his own right hand also. See, this is the newness of life that we're to know and that we're to be walking in right now. We don't have to be walking according to the old man. We don't have to be walking like the old man under sin, under condemnation, under guilt and shame any longer. We don't have to be low down seeing ourselves as a worm crawling the dust of the earth so unworthy anymore because we were made worthy through the blood of Jesus, through the finished work, and in identification with Christ. See, never again should you see yourself outside of Christ. You should always see yourself in Christ. That changes the picture. That changes your perspective. That'll change your attitude That'll change the way you walk in life. It will change you from walking according to the oldness of the dead man, uh, according to the old man, to the walking in newness of life, according to the new man, the new person recreated in Christ Jesus. And you are free of sin. You're free of Satan. You're free of the curse. It has no dominion over you. When the curse shows up, when Satan, he'll show up and he'll, he'll say some things to you. You can turn a deaf ear to him because you know, you know the truth. You know what's really the, the, the reality of your life now in Christ. You can resist him steadfast in the faith. You can put him on the run rather than him putting you on the run all the time. You can put him underfoot rather than him using you as a foot rug all the time. That is the, that is the reality of who you are now and what you have in Christ Jesus. You're no longer the lowly. You're no longer walking according to the low life, disconnected with God. You're now walking according to the higher life in Christ, connected in union with and one with God in the household of faith. 
I tell you, that's what all this is telling us right here. We've already covered a lot of ground here in these two weeks, but you can see this. This is descriptive of this new life that we have in Christ, that God wants us to walk in, live in, and manifest in our daily life. Good stuff. We got one more day this week, got some good things that we're gonna share with you tomorrow. All the time I've got for today. If you'd like additional materials, go to TonyCowan.org and we will see you tomorrow.